The FBI's most wanted fugitive list is a chilling gallery of the world's most notorious criminals. Most have been wanted and sought after for years, and only a few have been caught each year in the last decade. But amongst these sinister faces, there is one name that we're going to get into today. His name is Arnaldo Jimenez. He's not just a name on the list, he's the 522nd individual to be branded as one of the top 10 most wanted fugitives by the FBI. And his story? Well, Arnaldo's story is more than just a case file. Rather, it's a real-life story filled with unexpected events that will leave you questioning the depths of human darkness, especially in intimate relationships. Arnoldo's case is a little bit different than the typical wanted criminal on the list. Many are wanted for drugs, trafficking, and murder, but Arnoldo is wanted for a crime that would be unexpected, given it's supposed to be one of the happiest events in a person's life. He's an ordinary looking man with black hair, brown eyes, and a height of six feet. But monsters aren't always evident. Fast forward to today, he's 41 years old. But back in 2012, at the age of 30, he suddenly disappeared on his wedding night without a trace. But what circumstances led this ordinary man to become a fugitive? Here's where our tale takes a chilling turn. You see, Arnaldo isn't evading the law for a minor offense. Instead, it is a significantly larger and more complex situation. What makes this tale even more urgent is the recently increased reward of $250,000 waiting for the person who can provide information leading to Arnaldo's arrest. A quarter of a million dollars for the one who can help crack the case and discover where he's hiding. But let's rewind to where this incredible story actually unfolds. May 11th, 2012. It was a day that should have been all about happiness, but it turned into a tragic horror story. Arnaldo and his 26-year-old wife, Estrella Carrera had just tied the knot at City Hall in Chicago. They'd been together for two years and had a little boy together. Plus, Estrella had an eight-year-old daughter from a previous marriage. Estrella and Arnaldo's wedding day was not just about saying, I do. It was filled with surprises and secrets. As they exchanged vows and rings in that iconic government building, there was something peculiar in the air. A sense of secrecy shrouded the ceremony. You see, Estrella kept something to herself, something nobody else really knew. What could that be? The very next day on May 12, 2012, things got dark just a day after their big celebration. What was supposed to be the start of their honeymoon turned into a horrific tragedy. After their city hall ceremony, the couple, with Estrella dressed in a stunning silver sequin cocktail dress, continued their celebration. They had dinner in the area of Chicago called Little Village, joined by friends and family. Later, they rented a party limo that whisked them away into a nightclub in the northern part of Chicago. This night of celebration carried on until the early hours of the morning, setting the stage for what should have been a blissful honeymoon. But here's where the story deepens further. Almost no one knew about Estrella's plans to get married. She only invited a select few friends that Friday night, and she kept the nature of the celebration a closely guarded secret. Estrella's cousin, Sandy Lopez, received a call from her that day inviting her to a party, but there was no mention of the wedding. Sandy remembered and said, she didn't tell anybody, she didn't want to tell me she had gotten married, but she sounded happy. Sandy had her reservations about Estrella's relationship with Arnaldo. Their love story had been a roller coaster marked by ups and downs, turbulence, and challenges. The last few years, Sandy described their relationship as on again, off again. She described Arnaldo as someone with problems. She recalled Estrella's qualities, emphasizing her role as a loving mother, a wonderful person, and a caring sister. But as we move forward in our timeline, we arrive at May 12, 2012 a date that would forever change the course of this marriage. At 4 a.m. on that very day, Estrella and Arnaldo were last seen in front of her Burbank home. It should have been a moment of post-celebration bliss, a prelude to their honeymoon, but instead, something horrifying occurred, shattering the joy and thrusting us into the heart of this chilling mystery. Later that day, Estrella was expected to pick up her children from family members, but she never showed up. 
Concerns grew and the family took action, reporting her as a missing person around 3.30 p.m. The next day on May 13th, when the cops checked Estrella's place, they found something that made their skin crawl a lifeless, bloodied body in the bathtub of her third floor apartment, still wearing the same silver sequin dress she had on at her wedding. But Arnaldo, the man who had vowed to be her husband just days ago, was nowhere to be found. Arnaldo didn't just disappear, he executed an escape that seemed straight out of a Hollywood thriller. He fled in his 2006 black Maserati, a car that was as conspicuous as it was fast. This luxury vehicle would play a crucial role in the unfolding drama. Days after Estrella's disappearance and Arnaldo's sudden vanishing act, investigators made a startling discovery. The black Maserati, the same car belonging to Arnaldo, and the car that was said the couple were last seen in, appeared at the home of Arnaldo's brother Umberto Jimenez. It was a perplexing twist in a case already filled with mysteries. Inside that Maserati, investigators found evidence that deepened the sense of dread surrounding this case. Inside the vehicle raised alarming questions. Did Estrella die in that car? What had transpired inside that car on that faithful night? Where did he get the money for that fancy car given that he didn't have a job and there didn't seem to be records of employment for him? The answers seem to elude everyone. And here's where the story takes a turn for the worse. Captain Joe Ford, who's a spokesman for the cops in Burbank, called it a brutal murder with anger written all over it. The couple had fights before, Arnaldo was said to be jealous and possessive and had a history of domestic violence. He even had been arrested previously in a different case. However, this time, the situation took a distinct twist and painted a further picture. Estrella's sister, Jasmine, admitted Arnaldo had hit and bruised Estrella in the past. Adding more to this is the involvement of Arnaldo's brother, Umberto, on the significant date of May 13th, shortly after her murder, the brother was alongside Arnaldo, and Arnaldo's sudden disappearance on his wedding night had already surprised everyone. But on this day, the brother's actions became even more unexpected. As part of a large drug investigation involving several states, federal investigators had listened in on the brother's phone conversation. And in court, they said that they heard him talking to someone about a sudden trip to the Mexican border on May 13th, the very day after a Estrella's life was tragically lost. Investigators believed this unplanned journey might have been to help his brother Arnaldo's escape to Mexico. Later on in a federal court during a detention hearing for Arnaldo's brother, authorities revealed that the missing Maserati had been found in his brother's garage when he was arrested in connection with the large-scale investigation spanning several states. Prosecutors told the judge that inside the car was filled with blood and that it appeared that there had been a feeble attempt to clean it up. Adding to the intrigue, after Estrella's lifeless body was found, Arnaldo's new sister-in-law came forward. She recounted receiving a call from him reporting to her that they had a really bad fight and describing how he'd left Estrella bleeding. He hung up, she tried to call him back, but he wouldn't answer. These disturbing revelations only deepened the mystery surrounding Arnaldo Jimenez's disappearance and the events that led to Estrella's tragic demise. The FBI joined the hunt, tracing Arnaldo's move from Chicago to Memphis, Tennessee, Arkansas, and Houston, Texas, all the way to Hidalgo, Mexico. However, as we explore this complex case further, a crucial question arises. Where did the tragic events occur? Did they unfold in the car or the apartment? The FBI's role in this chilling scenario became paramount as the investigation intensified. They believe that on the way from the club, Arnaldo and Estrella got embroiled in a heated argument within the confines of their Maserati. And tragically, the argument escalated, leading Arnaldo to commit a horrifying act. Estrella was stabbed multiple times, and authorities believed Arnaldo killed Estrella in that Maserati before her lifeless body was moved into her apartment. On May 15, 2012, Arnaldo was charged with first-degree murder and a state warrant was issued for his arrest, but the authorities didn't stop there. 
Then on May 17th, just two days later, the federal authorities threw their weight behind the hunt, charging him with unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. It was a clear sign that the law enforcement agencies were restless in their pursuit of justice. Estrella's sister Jasmine stepped forward during this tumultuous time, taking in her sister's children. She spoke about the gravity of the situation. She acknowledged that being placed on the FBI's top 10 most wanted list was no small feat. Arnaldo wasn't added until 2019, seven years after Estrella's murder. There was a glimmer of hope that this dramatic turn of events would bring an end to their search. Jasmine expressed, saying, We know nothing will bring Estrella back, but we have some kind of peace knowing that Arnaldo is paying for his crime. An FBI agent named Jeff Salad didn't mince words addressing Arnaldo directly. He said with a reward on his head and the shame of being on the FBI's most wanted list, Arnaldo has very few friends left. The agent implored him to do the right thing, turn himself in and provide closure and justice to Estrella, her children and the Burbank community. It was a plea laden with urgency and moral responsibility. And Special Agent Steve Barnard, added further weight to the situation. He described Arnaldo as extremely violent, especially towards women, making it abundantly clear that he belonged behind bars. So where could Arnaldo be hiding? According to Captain Ford, there were tips that pointed to central Mexico, originating from Chicago, but the tips still connected to Mexico. This information offered some clues but raised more questions. The search for Arnaldo continued with potential sightings and leads leading investigators to Mexico, but specifically he might have sought refuge in Durango, Mexico, particularly in the area of Santiago Papasquero. Additionally, he might be seen in Reynosa and Tamaulipas. As we dive deeper into the complexity of this case, the hunt for Arnaldo Jimenez escalates. It's been a long 11 years and only recently has the reward increased to $250,000. The FBI, Australia's family and the Burbank community remain resolute in their pursuit of justice. They are determined to uncover the mystery surrounding his disappearance and hold him accountable for his actions. Now, when Estrella Carrera's life was tragically taken away, it sent shockwaves through her close-knit community in Burbank. More than 200 people came together at St. Rita of Casilla to remember and pay their respects to Estrella. As people entered the church, some wore black t-shirts with a picture of Estrella and the words in loving memory, along with the dates of her birth and passing. It was a touching way to honor her memory and show how much she meant to every Everyone. At Estrella's wake, her uncle Pedro talked about how she had been as a little girl. He remembered her as someone who was friendly and kind to everyone. The pain of losing her was deeply felt by the whole family. One of the mourners, Altricia, knew Estrella from their daughter's school events. They were in the same class together and she shared something haunting. She had spoken to Estrella just two days before her wedding to Arnaldo. Estrella had confided in her about her fears. She was scared that if she didn't marry Arnaldo, that he would take her kids away from her. Now, while Estrella's family and the community mourned her loss and sought answers, investigators were tirelessly tracking Arnaldo's movements. They embarked on a digital pursuit, tracing the signal of his cell phone from Chicago to Mexico. Their digital breadcrumbs revealed specific locations along his journey, offering glimpses into his mysterious odyssey. We joined together in the pursuit of justice for Estrella Carrera and her bereaved family. If you have any information regarding Arnaldo, or his whereabouts, we urge you to step forward. You have the power to make a difference. Reach out by calling 1-800-CALL-FBI or contacting your nearest American embassy or consulate. Remember, the FBI is offering a substantial reward of $250,000 for information directly leading to his arrest. Arnaldo Jimenez is to be considered armed and dangerous, and your tip could be the key that unlocks justice. And in recent news, the FBI actually successfully captured one of their 10 most wanted fugitives, Jose Rodolfo Villarreal Hernandez. He was a notorious boss of a Mexican drug cartel and was added to the FBI's most wanted list back in October of 2020. His crimes included masterminding a murder that took place in 2013 and he was suspected of being involved in many other murders in Mexico. The good news is that on January 7, 2023, authorities finally caught up with him. This capture is a big win for law enforcement showing that even the most elusive criminals can still be brought to justice even years 
later. Now there's a guy that was removed at the end of 2022 from the FBI list. His name is Jason Derrick Brown. He's number 489 on the FBI's 10 most wanted list, but was removed on December 7, 2022. There's been reports of sightings of Jason throughout the years, even false arrests. There's an interesting obstacle regarding these false arrests. Jason has a resemblance to famous actor Sean Penn. Jason is wanted for the robbing and killing of an armored car guard in Phoenix, Arizona back in November of 2004. Prior to that, he was a Mormon boy. He started to party and get into trouble and financial trouble. Check out his story right here. Please subscribe, like, and share. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon.